Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new Hardcore Nuzlocke. Before we get going, quick shout out goes to today's sponsor, Dragon City. Dragon City is a free to play mobile game available on both iOS and Android devices. If you like Pokemon, then this game could be for you. Collect over 1000 different dragons and build up your own dragon empire. If you breed two dragons, you can hatch a new one, and if you feed them, you can evolve them. Train these dragons and take them to battle to make them even more powerful. Then take your dragons along to various PvP modes, and fight against your friends, or just face other dragon masters in battle. Use the link in the description below and new players will receive a free special reward of 15,000 food, 30,000 gold and 10 gems. Keep in mind that these rewards are available for 7 days only. So, if you're looking for an exciting new monster collecting game to scratch that Pokemon itch, then download Dragon City today. Back to today's video. It's been a little while since the last shiny hardcore Nuzlocke, and you guys really seem to enjoy them. I've recently had my eye on a ROM hack called Fuse Dimensions. It's a ROM hack of Fire Ed that includes, well, Pokemon fusions. For example, instead of finding a Rattata, you'll find a Psytata, which is a fusion of Psyduck and Rattata. These fusions all have unique typings, stats and move pools, etc, so it's a really unique experience. There's even Pokemon from later generations used for these fusions as well, so there really is a lot of variety. Another feature of this game is an increased shiny rate. In my opinion, shinies are maybe a little bit too common, but it does make for a perfect game to do a shiny hardcore Nuzlocke. The rate is 1 in 100, which means finding shiny Pokemon really won't be much of a challenge, but it still means we won't know what our encounter is until we've already found the shiny. For those of you who don't know what a hardcore Nuzlocke is, I can only catch the first shiny on any given route, and if it faints it must be placed in the PC and can no longer be used. I must nickname my Pokemon, and I'll be using the Species Claws. Also, no items in battle, I must play in set mode, and my highest level can exceed the next gym leader's strongest Pokemon. For the Elite Four, I'm setting this level cap at 58, as by the time I get to Lance, most of my team will be level 60, which is the same as his strongest member. My good friend Zwigo has already done a video quite similar to this, so make sure to check it out if you haven't already, I'll link his channel in the description below. Also, quick shout out to these people for finding DD. Look out for him in this one too, and comment down below with the timestamp for a chance to be featured next time. Alright then, let's get this shiny Nuzlocke underway. I start the game picking the female character and call her Miko. Comment down below if you get the reference. I of course name our rival Zwigo because um, uh, I can't remember, tell me in the comments. Now the first shiny I can encounter is my starter. I had some issues with this game not letting me save manually for some reason, so I had to state save to reset. This isn't quite as reliable but thankfully the shiny odds are very high, so it still doesn't take too long. The starter choices are a Bulbasaur and Zygarde fusion, a Squirtle and Aeron fusion, or a Charmander and Ralts fusion. I went with Squiron as it's called in this game, as I figured a Steel type would be very useful for this Nuzlocke. Like I said, it really didn't take too long to find the shiny either. By the way, I forgot to nickname this thing, and I never did. Sorry. Now we've got our starter, the real game can begin. It doesn't take us long before we find our first encounter, which happens to be a shiny Bungella. It's grass and normal type at the moment, which could be very useful for the first couple of gyms. To the left of Viridian I find myself a shiny Electran. You should be able to guess most of the typings here, as they're a mixture of the two Pokemon, so this is a poison electric type. Uh, Toxtricity who? On route 2 I catch a shiny Caterpheal. Okay, that is quite cursed, but in the best way possible. I then move on to Viridian Forest, where my encounter is a Weebra. Okay then, this could be an interesting addition to the team. Oh. Oh. Never mind. Okay, let's face Brock. His Rock-type Pokemon were no match for my Water and Steel-type. Lit Dude is first and hangs on from a Water Gun thanks to Sturdy, but just uses Defense Curl. One more finishes it off, and next out is Solonix. We resist both of his stab moves, and Water Gun is an easy 2-hit KO, so we were never in any danger. His last Pokemon is a Geon Edge which also has Sturdy, but he can barely touch us, so two Water Guns seal its fate, and we easily win the first badge. On my way to Mount Moon, I catch a shiny Ixuril. It won't be very useful right now, but I will keep it around, as this game has a forced EXP share, so it'll still level up without me having to use it. It's actually got huge power, so it is worth keeping around. 
I also catch a shiny lit dude in Mount Moon. A fire type is always handy to have around. Speaking of Mount Moon, while there I take the Helix Fossil, which means it's time for another instalment of Lord Helix's Words of Wisdom. Eat meat, don't just eat. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side, I find myself a shiny Saitata, and then decide to face Wiggo before facing Misty. He leads off with a Her Fairy, so I start with Squiron, as it is part Steel. Our Metal Claw deals big damage to it, and in return, his Fairy moves are really doing very little, even with us missing once, so eventually a second one takes it out, and out comes his Starter Bulb Core. He puts us to sleep and then digs underground, so I need to switch out here. I send in Bush Bunny, who takes minimal damage from Dig, but our moves aren't doing much either. For some reason though, he insists on spamming nothing but Sleep Powder. In this game, just like in the later generations, Powder moves don't work on Grass types. He never tries to attack me beyond that, so a flurry of quick attacks eventually take it down. Classic Zwigo move right there. Cactabra is next, so I hit it with a Rock Tomb, dealing about half, as we tank a Confusion. One more just barely fails to KO, and we're brought down to KO range ourselves. Thankfully I have quick attack though, so we move first and finish it, and his final Pokemon is a Saitata, who's weak to grass. I land a Mega Drain, which heals us just enough to survive a tackle, and from there we can finish it off for the win. Nice and easy Zwigo fight there. Before we take on Misty, Squiron evolves into Wartron, and Bolt evolves into a Manacrino. Turns out that's all we needed for this fight too, as we literally one-shot her entire team with Shockwave. We did get hit once, but we were never in danger, so we easily win gym badge number 2. Before moving on to Surge, we evolve Betsy, and find our next encounter. It's another Weebra. Finally, we get our redemption. Uh, oh. <sighs> Anyway, we also evolve Bush Bunny, who now loses its normal type in favour of ground type. This should be very helpful for the upcoming gym. Before that though I catch a couple more team members. First an LG Sir, which I'm pretty much only going to use for cut. And a Lilifa. Oh god it's so cute. Let's read its Pokedex entry. Oh. Oh, oh no. Oh god. Now we face Surge, who wasn't too challenging. We deal with his first two Pokemon Timkid and Manacarino easily. However, his first Pokemon Rhyplume deals some big damage to us with a Sludge Bomb. Not only that, but he survives the Bulldoze, and then heals up with a Super Potion. Thanks to Bulldoze, we're faster however, so one more takes it out, and his last Pokemon Rayalossum comes out, and I was a bit worried about this thing. For some reason though, like with Zwiggo, he just keeps spamming Sleep Powder. This means we can slowly chip away at its health until we finally knock it out, winning us the third badge. Thank god for bad AI. Before moving on, I pick up a shiny Dignia, a shiny Apalf, shiny Voltubi, and a shiny Roggenchop, just in case I need them later. I also evolve Betsy once again, where it becomes a Bug and Ice type. Should definitely come in handy for Erica. Wartron's actually gone past the level cap for this gym, so he's gonna have to sit this one out. Erica leads with the Lilitales, who deals measly damage with the Magical Leaf, and faints easily in two Bug Bites from Betsy. Doug Turn can't take an Aurora Beam after landing a weak Sucker Punch, and next is Electrium, who hits a weak Charge Beam, barely survives an Aurora Beam, but then heals up, only for us to get a better damage roll to finish it off. Jinxicott is last, and unfortunately puts us to sleep, and brings us to low health with the Psychic. I send in Pinch, who like I said I only have on the team so I can use Cut, but he actually tanks a Psychic, avoids a Sing, and then one-shots it with a Bug Bite to win us the battle. Not a bad showing considering it's an HM user. I evolve Bolt into a Manneking, defeat Giovanni and Zwigo with ease, and even evolve Ruby into a Lampella. I then catch a shiny Mime Mask and Lavender Tower, and state save reset for a shiny Wheeze Conda, which is a poison and ground type. I also find a shiny Abduo on the cycling path, naming it Raven. Okay, one more encounter before we move on. I find a shiny Zublu in the Safari Zone. I of course name it Zugold because comedy. Oh yeah, Azalea finally evolved as well, remember her? Not only that, we also evolve it again into its final form, Wiggerill. What is that? What the fuck is that? Let's move on to Koga. Wii's Mecho is first, so I leave with Wartron, and I have a risky strategy here. I recently learned the move Shell Smash, which boosts both attacking stats and speed, in exchange for lowering our defenses. After the boost, I was sure that Iron Head would be enough to KO, but it actually isn't. 
We did get insanely lucky though as he flinches, meaning we can take it out with another one. Wee's Condor is next, so I should really switch out. I send in Bush Bunny, who easily tanks a Bulldoze, but takes a lot more than I would have liked from a Sludge Bomb. In return, our Bulldoze hardly does anything, so I take a risk and go for Giga Drain. We're still outsped and hit by another Sludge Bomb, leaving us in the red. We get poisoned as well, which would have spelled disaster for us if we didn't heal up a little bit with Giga Drain. I definitely need to switch now though, so I send in Betsy. Sludge Bomb still deals a good chunk of our health, but we can outspeed the next turn, and finally finish it with a serve. Muckerel is next, so I send in Bolt, who's immune to Toxic. I hit it and paralyze it with a discharge as he begins using Minimize, but thankfully we don't miss the second one, which brings it down to KO range. He just goes for a full heal as well, and I don't want to risk missing, so I play it safe, and finish it with a Shockwave. Last up is Apple King, so I try for Discharge, but it hardly does any damage, and we take a huge chunk from a Psychic. I need to switch again, so I send in Ruby, who easily tanks a Psychic before hitting a Rock Blast, even hitting 5 times. It's still not quite enough though, and we're brought down to the red with another Psychic, so I try and finish it off with a Dig, but this was a terrible mistake. He fully heals up on the turn I go underground, meaning that after taking the hit the next turn, he can knock us out before we have a chance to switch. That's the first loss of this run. From here though, I can send in Betsy who can outspeed it, and finally finish the battle with an Aurora Beam, winning us gym badge number 5. Not without casualty though. After the fight, Wartron actually evolves into Blastron. This is definitely a big upgrade for the rest of the run. I put Ruby in the PC, and decide to replace her with Raven. I then evolve it into an Abdrio, and I was gonna pick up a Pokemon from the Fighting Dojo, but they're just Abduo and Abdrio. Kinda disappointing. We take on Team Rocket, where we're faced with another Zwiggo fight. First out is Stout Fable, so I leave with Bolt, and his attacks are barely scratching us thanks to our Intimidate, so we can easily take it out in a few discharges, and next up is Beedrazam. Blastron pretty much walls this thing completely, so I send it in to sponge a couple of hits, before landing an Iron Head for a one-shot. Venegard is next, and I don't know why I stayed in. We get hit by an Earthquake, but it actually doesn't do too much, but neither does our Iron Head. I need to switch out, so I send in Betsy, who can take hits all day. He actually just decides to use Sandstorm the next turn, so we can easily dispatch of it with a 4x super effective Aurora Beam. And next out is Volpua, who is an easy one shot with a Surf, as it is a Dark and Fire type. Last up is Serpados, and things get a little bit sketchy as he starts to set up Dragon Dance, but our Bug Buzz still deals a great chunk of its health, and we even barely survive the Aquatail the next turn, meaning we can finish it off with one more Bug Buzz to win us the fight. We did get quite close to losing Betsy there though. Once again, Giovanni was no issue, so let's move on to the 6th gym leader, Sabrina. Carapno is first and is weak to Blastron's Iron Head, but still hangs on and goes for Curse. He heals up with a Citrus Berry, but not even that saves him from a second hit, and Tentazong is next. Neither of us can really do much to each other, so this did take a while, especially as she fully heals up. We do eventually bring it down though, and next up is Beedrazam. This isn't any Beedrazam though, it's a Mega Beedrazam. We still tank a Shadow Ball and hit back with a Rock Slide, but she actually somehow lives. I switch into Raven as she uses another Hyper Potion, and I was hoping I'd be faster, but we're actually not. We get hit by an X Scissor, only to live on just 3 HP. That was too close. A single Night Slash takes out from there, and her final Pokemon is a Bravey Army, so I send in Bolt, who easily takes a Slash. From there, we can outspeed and one hit KO with a Discharge. We win the badge, but that was a little close. Let's move on to Blaine. He leads off with a Heation, so I decide to give Azalea a try, but he just goes straight for Substitute as we immediately break it with a Surf. We then tank a Psychic with ease before hitting another Surf, which leaves him on the tiniest sliver of health. He fully heals it up, but two more Surfs seal the deal, and Fear Cargo is up next. I send in Blastron, who resists Drill Peck, and it does next to nothing. We even outspeed it, taking it down in a single 4x effective rock slide. As it happens, a lot of his team is 4 times weak to rock. A Bomar is fire and ice type I believe, and also faints to a single rock slide after hitting a weak earthquake, and last up is Pidgeokan. I'm assuming it's a fire and flying type, so I go for rock slide again, as he mega evolves. 
Thankfully, we easily take the Blaze Kick, and Rock Slide hits, but just barely fall short. He uses another Hyper Potion, but we actually get a better damage roll this turn. So it goes down, and we win the seventh badge. Just one more left to collect. Let's get that one now, shall we? Giovanni leads with a Dug turn, so I send in Blastron. He outspeeds, but only sets up a Sandstorm, so we can deal some big damage with an Iron Head. He does survive though and hit a super effective Earthquake, but we've got plenty of defense to take that, and one more Iron Head is all we need. Marojask is next, so I switch into Azalea, as he goes for Bone Rush, but it does hardly anything. It takes a few hits to take it down thanks to him healing, but a few Surfs deal with it, and we don't even take too much damage in the process. Wistar is next though and goes for Thrash, which we do survive, but our Surf barely does any damage. I decide to send in Bush Bunny, who not only can take hits for days, but also has the 4 times super effective Giga Drain to easily deal with it. His own Dig Growth is next however, so I send in Betsy, whose Ice moves are 4 times super effective. He does set up a Sword Stance, which did scare me for a while, but we're luckily faster, and a single Aurora Beam sends it packing. His final Pokemon is Meta Slash, and it's a Mega too. I was hoping to KO with a Surf, but it just isn't enough, and to make matters worse, he sets up a Sword Stance. I completely underestimated how fast this thing is in its Mega form, and we unfortunately get taken out from full health with a Metal Claw. I won't lie, this one hurt, Betsy was probably my favourite team member. I send in Bush Bunny and pray that Earthquake is enough, and after taking 50% from a Metal Claw, I discover that it's not. This is not good. To make matters worse, he fully heals up, but we get given a gift from the heavens as our second Earthquake is actually a critical hit, meaning we're still in this. No one else on my team wants to take a boosted hit, so I have to pray that we can tank another Metal Claw. He goes for it, and we live with just 4 HP. Our third Earthquake is enough to finally take this thing down, and we win our 8th and final Gym Badge, but not without a casualty. I put Betsy in the PC with Ruby, and decide to give Zoogold a try. I do some training, evolving it into a Gold Barrier in the process, and now we can face the Elite Four, but not before we have to face Wigo one more time. Stout Fable is first, so once again I lead with Blastron, and easily take care of it with two Iron Heads, the second of which being a crit. Crocodon is next and is 4 times weak to grass, so I send Bush Bunny in on a drill run, which even with a crit does pitifully low damage. We one shot in return with a Giga Drain and next to his Volpua, who faints to a single earthquake. Beedrazam is next, so I switch Blastron back in, and take an X-Scissor and Psychic before one shotting it with a Rock Slide. Venagard is next though, so I send in Raven, who is immune to earthquake. He actually ends up going for Sandstorm however, and our draw pack isn't actually enough to KO. He hits a powerful Petal Storm, but we resist it, so we can outspeed and knock it out the next turn, and his final Pokemon is Serpados. I take a risk and stay in, but draw pack leaves him on the tiniest sliver. I thought we were doomed here, but he actually misses the Hydro Pump at the crucial moment, and then the Sandstorm damage takes him out, winning us the fight. That is the second time that Raven has cheated death. We make our way through Victory Road, where I can catch my final shiny for this run, a Duolix. I use my Master Ball on it, because why not? I'm quite happy with the team I've got right now, so I think it'll stay in the PC. I then train up to the level cap, so let's take a look at the team we'll be bringing in. Overall, I'm really happy with it. Most of the team has been with us since the beginning, with only Raven and Zugol being newer additions. We've made it this far with just two deaths, let's see if we can make it all the way to the end. Let's do this. Lorelei is first, but was actually relatively easy. Mr. Race is first, but she insists on spamming Teeter Dance. While we do hit ourselves a couple of times, we eventually knock it out with a Rock Slide, and next up is Snortic, who misses a Hammer Arm, which probably would have done a lot of damage, meaning we can take it out in a couple of Iron Heads. Sablash is next, who even after being fully healed, can't deal with our onslaught of Iron Heads. I even take the opportunity to set up a Shell Smash, which pretty much sets the rest of this fight in motion. Sablash faints easily, and his final two Pokemon Frost King and Glorbro both go down just as easily, winning us the first match of the Elite Four. Let's hope the rest of them are this easy. Bruno is next, but predictably wasn't too much of a challenge either. 
Raven easily deals with his first three Pokemon, Brelsect, Aromnable, and Lycanchan, using Drill Peck and Jump Kick respectively. Next out is Gigachamp, which I think is just beyond Raven's capabilities, so I switch in Bush Bunny who takes a Stone Edge, and hits back with a Power Whip for big damage. Luckily for me, he ends up missing the Dynamic Punch, but then he heals up, but a couple of Giga Drains take it out easily, and we fully heal up in the process. We're already down to Bruno's final Pokemon, Galazard, which happens to be a Mega. He misses a Fire Fang, but our Earthquake doesn't do a whole lot of damage, but I know that Azalea is the perfect counter to this thing. I send her in, and we can take hits all day, so a Blizzard followed by a Superpower easily take it down, winning us the fight. Even in Fused Dimensions, Bruno is still bad. Agatha's next, and she leads with a Dusk on 2. Once again, I leave with Raven and go straight for the Night Slash, but this little guy's got a lot of defense as it barely does half. She actually just goes for Curse though and takes herself out. Suicide is badass! I'll take it. Mr. Grigus, Curse design by the way, thanks I hate it, can't withstand a single Night Slash, and next out is Dusk on Z. I switch in Bolt who takes an Ice Punch, and I hit back with a Discharge the next turn for decent damage, but we do unfortunately get burned by a Tri Attack, meaning we have to switch out. Bush Bunny comes in, but she uses Recover to regain her health, so I just start attacking. It takes a while thanks to her spamming Recover, but we do eventually knock it out in a few more hits, and next up is Mad Ninja, who still only has 1 HP, so instantly falls to a knockoff. Agatha's final Pokemon is again Ninja. I decide to switch in Blastron as we resist her water attacks, but this ended up being a mistake. Not only does she Mega Evolve, but we barely survive a Shadow Ball the next turn, and our Iron Head hardly leaves a dent. I go to switch out, but she has Shadow Tag. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgement. I have no choice but to let Blastron faint, and that's our starter gone just like that. I switch into Raven, praying I'll be faster, and thankfully I am. We hit a Night Slash to take it out, and we finally beat Agatha. We've made it to Lance, but we're a teammate down. He leads with the Hunter Tour, so I send in Bush Bunny. It's a Water Dragon type I believe, so I just start spamming Giga Drain. We get insanely lucky as he misses his second Hydro Pump, which I feel had a chance to knock us out. This means we can outspeed and finish it with one more, and next up is Flatbro. I know this thing is weak to ground, so I use Earthquake, but it does less than half, as he flies up into the sky. I switch into Bolt who can take it with ease, and hit back with a super effective Blizzard for the KO. Venegard is next, and he actually Mega Evolves. I have to switch here as he has Earthquake, but for some reason our Intimidate activates again. I switch in Azalea who easily takes an Earthquake, and I go for a Blizzard as we're hit by a super effective Petal Storm. That Intimidate probably saved us there. Blizzard hardly does any damage though, but we do get a very lucky freeze, so from here I can send in Raven, and go for a Drill Peck, hoping it'll be enough. Upon switching though, his health is lower than it was. I think the HP bar is bugged here. Drill Peck is enough to KO from that range, and next up is Crowbaria. Night Slash doesn't do that much, and we're hit by a super effective Moonblast, so I switch in Bolt who can easily take another one, and finish it from there with another Blizzard. We're down to Lance's final Pokemon Inteliite, and it's a Water and Dragon type, so I try to get some good damage in with Discharge, but he starts setting up Dragon Dance, which is really quite terrifying. He sets up not one, but two of them before we bring it to low health and paralyze it, but of course he does fully heal up. We don't get another Paralysis, so I probably should have switched here, but I stay in and we just can't survive the Outrage, and Bolt goes down, another OG member gone. Azalea is immune to Outrage, so I do get a free hit in with Superpower, but it isn't enough, and to make matters worse, he fully heals up again. All of a sudden, this isn't looking too good. We do get an insanely lucky crit though to bring it back down to low health, but unfortunately, Azalea can't take a hit, and also goes down. My only chance of winning this is hoping that Bush Bunny can take a hit, as it is my bulkiest Pokemon. He goes for Outrage, and we live with just 6 health remaining. We end the fight with an Earthquake, and just barely beat Lance. We've now made it to the champion, but it's a 3 on 6. As always, Wiggo leads with a Stout Fable, so I lead with Bush Bunny, and start spamming Giga Drains and Earthquakes. 
He sets up cosmic power though and then starts hitting Moonblast and because of those heightened defenses, we actually end up losing the one on one and Bush Bunny goes down. I did do this on purpose though so I could get a free switch into Zoogold, who can outspeed and finish it off with a Poison Fang. Next up is his starter Venagard though and of course, he mega evolves it as well. We get outsped and absolutely wrecked by a critical hit outrage, so now it's his 5 Pokemon versus my Raven. It's not looking good but I have one chance to win this. I go for Sword Stance praying I can take an outrage and by some miracle we actually do survive, meaning I can outspeed and go for Drill Peck. I watch the HP go down and then stop, but then it, it faints. Okay, the HP bar is definitely bugged for this Pokemon. All of a sudden, we're still in this. Feraliora is next, and it's part rock, so I use Jump Kick, which is just enough to take it out. Three more Pokemon to go. Serpados is next, but can't survive a Drill Peck, and his penultimate Pokemon is Beedrezan. I was worried we get outsped here, but we move first, and we can easily take it out with another Drill Peck. Now it's a one on one, and his final Pokemon is a Nine Arc. It's part dark so I use jump kick and it's enough to take it out. We beat Zwiggo somehow and beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Fused Dimensions using only shiny Pokemon, but only just. Well that was definitely the most nail biting end to a Nuzlocke that I've ever had. Raven absolutely came through for me in that fight just when I thought I had no chance. The HP bar glitch was a bit weird, but I assume that the Mega Venagard has had its base HP change which messed up the HP bar or something, I'm not really sure. Either way, we just managed to pull through, with only 2 deaths up to the Elite 4, but 7 total deaths overall. I was really happy with this team, like I said earlier, most of the members have been with us since the very beginning, and I was particularly impressed with Bush Bunny, who provided a lot of defensive utility to the team. Blastron was a great choice for a starter, and of course, Raven was by far the MVP of the team. I also just want to mention just how much I enjoyed this ROM hack. It's a really refreshing take on the Kanto games, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would maybe suggest making the Shiny Odds a little bit lower, as they're just a little bit too easy to find at the moment, but other than that, I love this game, and would definitely recommend you try it out. I'll definitely be making more videos on it in the future. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. I post videos once every two weeks, alternating between challenge videos and hardcore nuzlocks. Join me next time when we'll be taking on another Fool's Gold Monotype challenge. Thank you once again to Dragon City for sponsoring this video, click the link below to download the game for free, and receive your rewards. That's all I've got for you today, so as always thank you all so much for watching, until next time.